Back when the Las Vegas Raiders were called the Oakland Raiders, they played at the Oakland Coliseum. The stadium first opened in 1966 and was home to both the Oakland Raiders and the Oakland Athletics of Major League Baseball. This is what caused some of the strange things about the stadium. The way it was designed, the infield of the baseball diamond was right in the middle of the football field. So during baseball season, there was dirt stretching from one 20 yard line all the way to the other. There was also dirt from the warning tracks that would be in both end zones. Another strange part was all the extra space around the field, so you could never get a really close seat to the action. Over the years, the stadium had a number of problems come up. There were plumbing issues, possums have also lived in the stadium for years, and in 2014, there was a dead rat found in the Raiders press box. The Patriots became a team in 1960 and played at the Boston University field for their first years until 1962. Then from 63 to 68, they played their home games at Fenway Park. Fenway Park is known for being the home of the Boston Red Sox and one of the oldest baseball stadiums around. The stadium is already very unique for baseball and for football, they had to make some changes. They added some seats in from the left field wall known as the Green Monster. Overall, it worked pretty well and most of the seats were close to the action, but the stadium only had a capacity of 33,000 for football and their current stadium, Gillette Stadium, has over 66,000 seats. In the 1932 NFL playoff game, the Chicago Bears were playing the Portsmouth Spartans. The Spartans are now the Detroit Lions, and the game took place in December of 1932. The Bears played their home games at Wrigley Field at the time, but because of snow and cold temperatures, instead of playing outside, they decided to move the game indoors at Chicago Stadium. This was the first indoor game in NFL history. However, Chicago Stadium was a hockey arena and not built for football. Because of this, the dimensions and rules had to be changed just for this game. They only had 80 yards of space, and with end zones, only 60 could be used for the actual playing field. It was also just 45 yards wide, which is 10 less than usual. When a team crossed the 10-yard line in the game, the ball was moved back 20 yards. They also did not allow any field goals or drop kicks to be used in the game. As for the playing surface, this was well before sports turf was around, and they played on the tan bark, which is small pieces of tree bark commonly used for walking trails or gardens. This was there from a circus that was in town a week before the game. Here is an actual picture of the game. And here is a more clear picture. In the end, 11,000 fans were at the game, and the Bears beat the Spartans 9-0. The Cleveland Browns played at Cleveland Stadium from the time they were founded in 1946 all the way until 1995. The strangest thing about this stadium was that it was built for baseball. It opened way back in 1931, and for most of the time that the Browns played there, it was pretty old. There was a massive amount of space past the sidelines before you got to the fans, which always looked weird. There was also a part of the infield dirt on the field if it was a game during the baseball season. In 1996, the stadium stopped being used and the Browns moved to Baltimore. However, just a few years later in 1999, a new stadium was built on the site where Cleveland Stadium had been and the Browns became a team again. From 1961 to 1966, the Chargers, who were called the San Diego Chargers back then, played at Balboa Stadium. This is a stadium that was built in 1914 and was mainly used for track and field and racing. When the Chargers came into town, the stadium increased their seating from 23,000 to 33,000 fans. The stadium had seating in the shape of a U and always kept the track which went around the football field. The Chargers moved out in 1967 and into Qualcomm Stadium where they played until 2016. That stadium was much bigger with a capacity of 71,000. Balboa Stadium is still around today, but now seats just 3,000 fans. The Polo Grounds was built in New York City way back in 1890 and was renovated in 1911 and again in 1923. As you can tell by the name, it was originally built for polo, which created its unique shape. However, multiple Major League Baseball teams, the New York Giants, the New York Yankees, and the New York Mets spent time playing there over the years. It was also home to the New York football giants from 1925 to 1955 and the Jets from 1960 to 1963. The stadium fit the shape of a football field much better than baseball, but it was still very unique. The capacity was 55,000 fans and the stadium was demolished in 1964, one season after the final year the Jets played there. 
Candlestick Park is yet another stadium that was used for both football and baseball. It's nice to be able to do so much in a stadium, but it's not ideal for either sport and is rarely seen anymore. Candlestick Park was the home of the San Francisco Giants from 1960 until 69 after the Giants moved from the Polo Grounds in New York all the way to San Francisco in 1958. The Oakland Raiders played games there in 1960 and 61, and in 1971 the San Francisco 49ers moved out of Kezar Stadium and into Candlestick Park. Because the field had mainly been used for baseball, it had a weird look when it would be used for football, mainly with the seats that would have to come in from the outfield of the baseball field. The Giants moved out of Candlestick Park and into a new stadium in 2000, so that left the stadium just for the 49ers, and they played there all the way until 2013. They later moved into Levi's Stadium in Santa Clara. The Washington Commanders have played at FedEx Field since 1997. Since then, the stadium has been renovated twice, in 2011 and 2012, and expanded three times in 98, 2000, and 2005. The capacity of seats in the stadium has also changed seven times. Originally, it had a capacity of 80,000, but was increased to 91,000 from 2004 to 2010, and has been lowered several times since. Now the capacity is 67,000. With all of these changes, the stadium has some unique looks and some obstructed views as well. The stadium has also had water leaks and a barrier to a tunnel collapse, causing some fans to fall onto the field. Overall, it's been one of the weirdest stadiums in football for a while now. The Houston Astrodome opened in 1965 as the first indoor stadium for the MLB and would later become the first for the NFL as well. It was also the first stadium to use artificial turf instead of real grass, which gave it the nickname of AstroTurf. Three years after the Astros moved in, the Houston Oilers moved into the Astrodome in 1968 after playing seasons at Jeppesen Stadium and Rice Stadium. The Astrodome was amazing at the time with all of the new features and started a trend of many teams building indoor stadiums and using artificial turf. The Oilers played there until 1997 when they moved to Tennessee and became the Titans. Houston would get another team a few years later with the Texans, but by then the Astrodome was no longer used and a new stadium was built for them. Today the Astrodome still stands but has not had many events in it for years. It will always be a very historic building for being the first indoor stadium. Lambeau Field is the home of the Green Bay Packers and one of the strangest stadiums for several reasons. The first thing is the location. Lambeau Field is up in Green Bay, Wisconsin, far away from Wisconsin's largest city of Milwaukee. Green Bay is the third largest city in the state, with a population of just a little over 100,000 and hours away from the other cities. Long ago, teams would play in smaller cities, but over the years, most of them moved into larger markets. However, the Packers stayed because of their strong fan base and success. The stadium itself is one of the oldest in the NFL, and it's unique for having bleachers all the way around it and getting cold temperatures and lots of snow during games. 